Hello, this is Greg Hannon from Gospel Music University, and I am, this is a response to another Facebook posting. Uh, thank you for posting on my wall. If you haven't posted a comment or needed help or have a general question about music theory, about a chord or two in a song that you need help with, this is what we're here for, musicians helping musicians. And I'm actually, you know, I've never been a proponent of just giving you chords without understanding and teaching you the science. Uh, and the theory behind what goes with it, I can show you a chord, but it only applies to the one application I showed to you in. But if I show you the theory and the science of how to apply it across the board, you will be a much better musician than if, uh, you know, if you study it from that perspective. So I got a question from a student, uh, Zephaniah, and this is for you. And your question was, uh, uh, give us some tips and techniques uh, for Chording in the left hand and soloing in the right hand, and there are a lot of approaches to being able to do that. Uh, and as you know, in this form, I'm just going to give you a quick tidbit. But it's but basically, you know, I talk about in in my uh, online course, Contemporary Keyboard Harmony One. I talk about uh, diatonic chords, and I give you exercises to practice with diatonic chords. Diatonic chords that are chords that are created from the major scale of whatever key you're in. If I'm in the key of uh, B flat major, then there's a series of B flat diatonic chords uh, that we use in contemporary music that we learn. You know, in you know, the in exercise in the B flat diatonic chords, we number everything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. You know, so basically uh, those diatonic chords are just based on the root note of that major scale, and if you if you need a foundation and a root of those, definitely go online and take the course our contemporary keyboard harmony one. So we got to be able to hear the bass of a chord. You know, if I was to play a B flat major nine chord, you know, uh, and that elf is actually in the right hand. It's just red right now, but the right hand is generally in blue. But right now we, we're doing something different. All right, so the B flat is in the left hand. And, uh, and then I got this A, C, D, F, and right hand. This is the B flat major nine chord. Okay, and you got to be able to hear the B flat la in order to determine what the chord is. If you don't hear the B, if I take the B flat out of the chord, then I got another chord up front. This nine chord becomes a D minor seven chord. You know, if I take the B flat out, you know, and you add a D on the bass, you know, it changes the sound. But when you go back to the B flat that's a, that's a totally different sound so you have to hear the bass note in order to understand what harmony is going when you start playing left hand chords that means that you're playing chords without the root of the chord you know so basically I would play that chord in the left hand but without a bass note so generally when you're playing rootless chords uh, you're either generally playing uh, chords on the organ where you can play a bass note in the foot pedal or you have a bass guitar player that will carry that will play that B flat on this bass guitar you know and then when we're doing some uh, improvisation things and some solo on we'll do that but let's take a look at just a maybe a simple progression you know and I'm gonna refer back to another song that I posted and then we're gonna use the same chord changes from it um, you know we're going from the E flat major 9 okay to a G minor nine, and you know, you know, as far as the G, E flat major nine to G minor nine. Okay, so if I took this chord right here, and this right, this right hand chord right here, and I played that in the left hand, now I'm playing all those notes in the left hand that I used to play <laughs> in the right hand. Now this becomes my chord that I can solo off of. So that's my that's a particular chord. Okay. And then the second chord we played up oh, against the bass was the G of the bass was that particular chord right there. Was that uh that F A B flat D. Now we take that and we play that in the left hand, so that becomes a chord for us. So let's kinda look at a couple of voices. This is I'm playing I'm using my left hand and I'm playing the E flat G, B flat, and D. If you're not playing left hand chord voices, they're gonna probably be a bit uncomfortable for you because it takes a lot of work to get the left hand strengthened up where you can comfort comfortably play chords and transition. So take these chords, play one note at a time. You know, in the left hand I'm using finger number five, finger number three, finger number two, and finger number one. You know, on that chord. The next chord I'm using finger number five, finger number three, finger number two, and finger number one. That's how I'm playing. I'm calling from the bottom up. And these are the fingers that I have on the keys. All these are left hand chords I'm playing. So we got a, a voice right here from 
this particular chord, which is a four chord, okay, going to a six chord in the key of B flat. So I'm playing, this is the voice that I'm using in the left hand. If I play the bass with it, you know, uh, either voice will work. So we got So now we're playing what normally would be played in the left and the right hand with a bass note. We're playing, you know, here, and we're going to here. You know, I'm saying now I'm just playing those chords in my left hand, okay, and play them slow. Okay, let's talk about uh, improvisation. Now we got two left hand chords. Uh, let me crank up a track for a second. And let's kind of look at, at what's going on with the track. Let me and let's, let me back that up too. Let me pull that over to the side, and we'll we'll start that track over from the beginning. All right, here we go. So all this is left hand action right here. Okay. Now here's a B flat major chord that we didn't do first. Okay. Okay, that's the four chord. That's the six chord. Okay. Here's the four chord. Now we're going to one chord. Okay, again, a four chord, left hand only, to a six chord, left hand only, going back to the four chord. Now we change it to one chord. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Again, four, to a six chord, then to a four chord, to a one. Okay, so my one chord, if you notice, is the same chord as my six chord. Okay, I'm playing the same exact chord on my six. Okay, but if I take that bass note that the bass player will play or the organ player will play at the foot, and now I play the E flat, it's a four. And in the key of B flat, in the key of B flat, the four is an E flat, and the one is the B flat. So four and the six is a G. So again, I can take one chord and play, put a G in the bass on this chord. This is a G minor 9. Listen to that dark minor sound. And then if I put the E flat on the bass, excuse me. Excuse me, I'm sorry. If I put the B flat on the bass, it becomes a B flat major 7 chord. Okay, so different. With the 6 in the root, it becomes a G minor 9. With the B flat in the root, Comes the B flat major seven, and they have two total, two totally different sounds. This is the six chord, and this is the one chord. The bass determines what the ear is going to hear, so that's why I teach in my uh, contemporary keyboard harmony one course, listening to the bass uh, note and hearing the bass note. Uh, you can't figure out what the chords are based on the melody. It has to be based on the notes. So that's why I did an ear training drill uh, in the Contemporary Keyboard Harmony 1 course uh, that teaches you how to hear the bass note and be able to separate it from the bass, the drums, and the piano and hear just the bass line. That's what we need in order to figure out chords to the song. So again, uh, let's talk about, okay, so we got our chords. Uh, we got our chords. We got our, uh, again, let me kind of start it from the beginning. And we, we got our chords that we're going to use in the left hand. Okay. And I'll write these out. I'll, I'll post those chords on the wall. And hit my one. The progression is we got a four. Then we got a six. Then we got a four again. And then we got a one. Okay, that, that's our progression right there. Okay, now let's look at the uh, some of the options we have for the right hand. When it comes to improvisation in the right hand, uh, runs and licks and some improv things, or soloing as you call it, uh, we're going to look at a couple of scales. There are a lot of, in gospel, jazz, R&B, pop, and neo-soul, uh, the popular scales are A, the blue scales, uh, the relative blue scale, and then the pentatonic scales uh, are also very popular also. And then, of course, major uh, scales are... Are, are popular too, depending on what the chords are that you're using. So let's look at a let's look at a one scale. Now I know we're in the key of, of B flat major, but we're gonna, uh, you know, in the relative minor of that key is G minor. You know, if I start this B flat scale on a G, it sounds minor rather than starting on the same exact notes. I'm just starting. Start on the sixth note, which is that minor, that G minor. And when
when you start on the B flat, the same notes, it gives you that major chord sound, that major scale. So we're going to look at uh, the relative minor of B flat, and the relative minor is G minor. So of the relative minor of B flat, I mean, relatives mean they are related. It means that if you're related, you share some of the same DNA. In this case, you share the exact same notes as the B flat major scale as you do in G minor, but you're just starting on a different pitch. Okay, so we're going to look at the G minor blue scale. That's the scale that's in the minor scale family. All right, here it is. That's one scale for improv. We can do a bunch of them, but we just only have 10 minutes in this form. So here we go. Actually, 15. That, so again, I'm going to just play them, display it on the screen for you. So if I go back to my chords, uh, my four chord, and I want to just improvise using a scale, then a G minor blues in the key of B flat works really, really well. Try in all your B flat songs that are in major keys, try improvising using a G minor scale. Great sound. You hear it all the time. And I'm just going to kind of solo with the left hand. Okay, those are my chords, and that's my scale. Just playing that scale against my left hand chords. Okay, so let's play that track and kind of give you an idea. So when we're doing some uh, improvisation, uh, here we go. Those are my chords. That's my four. Now I'm going back to my one chord. Okay, here we go. This is how you want to practice it first. So just kind of get the skill, just going up and back, back down, back up. Then you take those notes, you improvise with them. Okay, again. Okay, so uh, I'm just taking the notes of that scale and just uh, just experiment with it. Okay, again. And when it comes to improvisation, when you first start, you get the tools. What's your tools? Your tools are your rootless voices, your left hand chords, okay, and then uh, and, and then your then whatever scale you're gonna use. In this case, we're using that G minor blues scale, but you're not gonna necessarily start on the G, cause you know you want to start on a note It don't matter which one you press; they're all gonna sound good. You might want to repeat one. So that's your that that gives your foundation. That you'll be you'll be seeing courses uh, on the website real soon on improvisation and all these uh, concepts that we use as musicians. So next until next time, if they say you had to be gifted to play gospel music, evidently they don't know my secret. This is Greg Hannon for more. Keyboard tips, tricks, and more from gospelmusicuniversity.com.